May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> So tradition has it that St. Francis is the first person to have created a nativity scene because many people back then were illiterate. They couldn't read, they couldn't write, uh, and they, couldn't read, they certainly couldn't read their Bibles in Latin. I can't read my Bible in Latin, so let's not get too confident in our, in our own abilities. And um, because we talk about Christ as king of all, as creator of all, many people had in their mind that his birth would have been in a palace, surrounded by palace guards and palace people. And so as an attempt to, to teach people the very earthiness of the birth of Jesus, he made nativity scenes. Now, this is one of my personal favorites, um, and it was a gift to me uh, from a friend who went to Jerusalem. So it was made in Jerusalem. I like to think he bought it actually in Bethlehem, but uh, I suspect not. It's a bit battered over the years, but it's really, I like it. Now, a lot of nativity scenes, we have Mary. Um, here's one. She's always wearing blue. In the th that's, that's code. So if you see Mary, Mary's in blue, uh, and she's always looking peaceful. She's got a baby. This one, she's even had a chance to do her hair and her lippy. I think, you know, she's just given birth to a child. And she's had a chance to get all done up. Now, that's a lovely image. And when we talk about love and we look at those things, we, we sort of picture, I don't know, we kind of, I, for me, I, I picture something like a Mills and Boone cover. Have you seen those covers? And on the cover, she's looking adoringly up at him. He's looking down at her. He's got great hair. None of them have ever gone grey or anything like that. They, they just look fantastic. Um, and that's a lovely picture. However, if you read the Bible, and I, I, I wonder sometimes how we recommend people to read the Bible, it's like really confronting stuff in there. The deep humanity in there. Anyway, so if we read the Bible, the picture is slightly different. <clears throat> we still have Mary and Joseph, but Mary is... She's old enough to be betrothed, but she's not yet married. So she's quite young. Somewhere between the age of, let's say, 12 and 15. It's not the picture we normally have in our minds. And back then, if you were pregnant and you weren't married, what happened is the village, in order to not be shamed, they would kick you out, or in some cases, you would be stoned to death. So Mary's pretty tough, because when God says, do you want to have, be a mother to my child? She says, yes, and she knows that's coming. So Mary is a lot tougher than we often give her credit for. We often have this lovely, calm, peaceful picture. This was a young teenage girl who chose to buck her entire society's standards for the work of God. For the teenagers amongst us, that's, that's a benchmark for teenage rebellion if you want to know what it looks like. Her parents weren't happy. Her grandparents weren't happy. No one in the town was happy except God. That's what teenage rebellion done right looks like. So she's betrothed to Joseph. Now Joseph's a nice guy. And it's his, his intention is to, to end the annulment quietly. So maybe she can leave town. She can maybe go and have the child somewhere else. That way, he's not taking on any of the shame. He's following the rules, but he's also not dragging her in front of people that she might be publicly shamed and humiliated. And Joseph is visited by an angel in a dream, and the, and the angel says, no, 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 you need to marry her. Now, what we don't do shame in our society. We're a much more individualistic society than they were then. So we do guilt. Shame is more communal. It's shared. So if I do something shameful, 
It reflects on my entire family, and in fact, on my entire community. And the only way the community had to deal with that was to remove people from the community. <clears throat> what Joseph is doing is he is choosing to stand between Mary and the community. If you just picture it as throwing mud, and it was worse than that, but if you picture it as throwing mud, you know, mud it splatters, it stains, it darkens. Joseph cho chose to be the shield between Mary and a community that was going to throw mud and lots of it. It was worse than that, but that's a nice visual image, I think. So that's Mary and Joseph that we have as described in the Bible. They're tough, they're willing to take risks, and they do so for love. For love of God and for love of this child. Now, I'm a great one for models. Models are, is how we learn nearly everything. Babies. They're crawling along. They see big people moving around on two feet. They think, isn't that cool? I'm going to be like that. And they learn to stand and walk. And uh, kids at school, what's the cool present to have? The cool thing to be involved in? How do you know? Because all the other kids are into it. We see them and we go, oh yeah, that must be cool. And it's not just kids, by the way, it's adults, too. You watch the news, scary music comes on, and they're talking about refugees. How do we know we should be frightened of refugees? Because of the scary music. The announcer is very serious about these things. It's a serious issue. We copy other people. All of our almost all of our learning is based on models. So we have a choice about the models in this instance. And Mary and Joseph make a great model, not because they look like the front of a Mills and Boone couple, but because they model to us what God is like. They chose to take huge risks for others, as God does with us in the giving of, of Jesus to be one of us. It's a risk. They chose to get dirty for love. One of the best things about nativity, by, nativity scenes, by the way, is none of them come with an odour component. Have you ever noticed that? Because if you think about it, it's a stable. Stables is where you keep animals. Animals isn't very famous for showering. And um, I won't go into a deep blue just yet, but not a nice smelling place. Mary and Joseph chose to be in that. They chose to be dirty and courageous for love. Not just, you know, nice hair and pretty makeup love, but in it an active love. So when we choose a model, we should yes, we can ask the question, what would God do? What would Jesus do? But Sometimes that's a pretty big ask. Because if you stop and think about it, Jesus turned water into wine, raised the dead, and chose to die on a cross. That's a big ask. But Jesus also grew up with Mary and Joseph who were active in their love, who weren't worried about their clothes, but were worried about their responses to others. And so they make a great model for us. And if we can model ourselves on them, that model themselves on God, then we might become, for the rest of the world, a model of what it is like to be truly loving. Because if you think about it, a young girl, maybe the age of 15, and a young man, maybe the age of 18, we don't know, because of their love and courage, allowed the light of God to enter into the world. And we are preparing to celebrate that on the 25th of December. That's a model we should be aspiring to be like. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.